Hey everyone, it is Sunday, January 28th, 2018, and it's time to go to work on music. Uh, today has been pretty much perfect. I'm in a really good place and excited for a productive session. Um, yeah, I'm experimenting with tightening up my timing management, and so far I'm really happy with it, so I'll keep you guys updated with how that goes. Got a nice long session ahead of me, and it's um, going to be pretty heavy on the tracking and production front, which is exciting. Uh, going to hit some online classes, share my progress there, move myself forward on the drums, update you guys with what I'm doing on that front. Going to dive into tracking the first uh, verse and intro section of this new tune I'm working on for my new record. And uh, then I'm going to work on the vocals for the same track, and then I'm going to work on the guitar solo for the same track. Um, I'm feeling really inspired and excited to put my foot down on the production front and knock this record out. So I feel like I'm really entering the crunch time phase where the pressure of um, changing up my schedule soon is is sort of setting in. And I think it's a really positive thing. So just, just to give you some context, I've, um, I guess I don't know what the right way to say this is, but I, I do other things professionally besides music. And so I've put th all those things on hold, basically, for the past two months and for the next two months just to write and finish this record and make it as great as I possibly can. And also to experience what it would be like to work 40, 50, 60 hours a week on music, which I've never done over a consistent period of time before. So I'm right in the middle of that experiment uh, right now. Uh, but I have scheduled those other commitments to come back in at the end of, well, pretty much April, like very end of March, last couple days of March. So I'm excited for those, I'm excited for that next move, and I'm excited for a new balance, and at the same time I really want to capitalize on the time that I've set aside for music, if that makes sense. So, um, just to be clear, I'm not going to stop doing music at that time, I'll just go back down to doing music like 20, 30 hours a week, something like that, which is pretty much what I've been doing like the past few years, three, four years. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Um, let me know if you have any thoughts or questions as we go, and I'll update you guys in a few with what I accomplish. Right, excellent first half of the day, essentially perfect, exactly where I want to be headed um, in going forward and just kept things really crisp on the time management front, which is just so helpful for me and really helps me just get in the groove and stay in the groove and just remain focused in the zone for an extended period of time, Sw switching between things really helpful for me for that. So I... Um, worked on yesterday's video, I uh, hit some online classes, and just was thinking a little more deeply about whether I want to go with one network, social network, to start my journey, or if I want to try to start with a few different social channels. And honestly, I think the thing to do, and I may change my mind on this, I think the thing to do is just pick one and dominate that and really master that and go deep on that because the principles that I glean from that approach are going to apply in different networks uh, and just the specifics will be a little bit different. So I may alter that as time goes on, but that's the least expensive way for me to do it as far as time and energy goes. And um, I can always switch later and broaden my approach if I really want to. So. Yeah, I think that'll help because there's so many other things that I'm doing outside the, the, the business front and on the back end that I think if I can just narrow my focus a little bit, I'll be able to learn a little deeper and a little faster and just make really good progress, but we'll see. Um, so from there, I got into a good drum practice. I just hit more of the Benny Greb materials. He was giving some examples about different 
strategies you can use to get comfortable using the movable click exercise, which is just taking a click track and instead of treating it as a downbeat every quarter note, you treat it as a uh, quarter note upbeat or an eighth note upbeat, or you treat it as the second sixteenth note or the second or third triplet in a triplet, something like that, so that you can start to lock in the feel and timing of certain subdivisions. And so what I've been doing is just working on upbeat click, and so far so good. I'm having a lot of fun with that, and it's a great new challenge and a really good exercise, and I think it's just really strengthening my upbeat skills. So from there, I took a short break, did some reading from the Mixing Secrets from the Small Studio book. Um, that was more about tackling low-end problems in uh, non-ideal room or monitoring situations and a really valuable strategy there that I've been getting a lot of good mileage out of recently and will continue to do is high pass filtering pretty much every track and what that means is you just put some subtractive equal at EQ on the very low end of every single track. Now particularly if they're not low end parts so like guitars, vo voices, things like that you just shave off the low end. Some guys go all the way up to 160 hertz like every time um, and that just literally creates more space for your low-end bass instruments like kick drum and, and uh, bass guitar in the rock idiom. And what that allows you to do is there's just fewer things that you need to focus on to balance the low end. So that inherently makes it easier to do. So, sort of similar to what I'm talking about with the, the social media strategy thing. Um, but even further, Mike Senior, the author of the book, talks about even high-pass filtering bass kick drums and um, and, uh, and bass guitars because even if you just barely graze the audible spectrum you'll filter out all the subsonic stuff that often creates problems or just can create problems by cutting the headroom of, of your mix. So uh, yeah, it's just something I'm going to continue to use and, and live by and maybe even do more aggressively uh, now that I know how far people go up in the spectrum with filtering which I think is pretty intense. I didn't realize it was so extreme. Um, from there, I got into tracking drums and my practice sessions from last I was able to get right into the groove and uh, speed things up using the metronome relatively easily. Now, given the part is not nearly as intricate as some of the parts I was writing on the previous tune, so that's extraordinarily helpful. But by the same token, all the work I did on polishing my mental game and my approach on the previous tune, much like everything else I've been discussing recently, uh, has been extraordinarily helpful because I knew exactly the mental state I wanted and needed to get to to get the type of take that I was going for. So I was able to shave about 30 minutes to a few hours off of what I would normally have needed in order to track something like that, which is a huge, huge win right now, uh, given what I've been talking about the last couple of weeks, which is, you know, I'm, I'm very committed to the, the quality is going to remain high regardless. But inside of that commitment, being as efficient as possible is extremely helpful because that means I have more time to learn, polish my mental game, I have more time to rest and integrate, which is extremely helpful when doing a lot of intense physical stuff, and I just have more opportunities to grow my vision and my dreams in other arenas, whether that be musical, guitar, production, video, or just even other businesses. So I'm going to take a short break and uh, have some food, and then I'll dive back in in a few. But I'm searching for the answers to evermore. All right, overall good second half of the day. I think I pushed it a little harder than is optimal. And what I did is in the second half of the session, I just jumped right into finishing yesterday's video, which was good. And then I dove straight into the vocal front and I was feeling tired from the drum tracking session earlier where I put like a lot into that. And uh, I was going for a final take on the vocal section. And I think when I'm doing final takes for vocals, the, the thing to do in the future is just try to do one section per day because I went through and I had some good momentum, I got some good results for the first verse, so I was like, oh, let me try out the first pre-chorus, that was cool, and then like, oh, let me hit the first chorus, and I think, like, that's probably fine to do, but I think I'll get better results and have more efficiency if I just break it up a little bit over a couple days, because I was so... I just was... 
I, I just was really cooked by the end of that. And I think what would have been the way to go, and that soaked up a ton of the second half of the session, and then I kind of lost 20 minutes because I was just like really out of it. But um, I think the thing to do in the future would be just go for a final take uh, for the first verse, get that really good, and then just stop while I'm ahead. You know, I don't have to exhaust myself just to, you know, prove, prove that I pushed it as hard as I could on any given day or something. Um, and then what I think would have been great is just dive straight into the guitar solo, do some light work on that, and then just c cut the session off like 20, 30 minutes early and just reward myself for a really productive, intense day. And I think, I think that's going to be a big key for me going forward is thinking just about intensity and efficiency and not thinking about like exhausting myself or pushing things to the limit or like you using every single minute of session time or something like that it's you know really i just want the result i just want a really really great result and i also want a great experience getting that result i don't just want to kill myself <laughs> getting the result because i could have done that today you know i could have jumped into doing the guitar solo and just been hating it and just, you know, force myself to do it. And, like, I've done that before, and I'm, I'm more than capable of doing that. Um, but I just, that's just not what I want. You know, it's just not what I want. And if that's the only way, you know, I'll, I may discover that over the next few months or next few years. If that's the only way, okay, well, then I've got an important decision to make, right? But I just don't believe yet that that's the only way for me to do it. I think I can keep it balanced. I think there's a lot of other things I can work on in conjunction with tracking. And I kind of lost sight of that over the past couple of days because I think I shifted the balance too far away from tracking and I was a little too focused on like social media marketing and business tactics and things like that. And I'm just searching for the right balance this year. I'm recalibrating things a little bit versus last year and I'm just experiencing you know, some growing pains and some slips based on that. But it was a good mistake today. I've never made that mistake before um, over tracking vocals. Um, I've, I've maybe made similar mistakes, but I think just coming into today, I had a lot of excitement and inspiration and energy and I wanted to really just like make some really good progress. And I think I could have done that and checked more boxes by just being a little smarter about how I organized my time and my energy. So I'm gonna reflect on that tonight and make a better plan going forward. And I've already notated that to myself just with vocals, you know, keep it crisp. And I think I'm also gonna make some special concessions where I'm doing a heavy tracking day at the beginning of the session just to make sure I don't have anything too crazy lined up for the end of the day. So um, in some ways I kinda took a loss there, but I think it's a long-term gain if that makes sense. Like sort of like a, just like hitting the wall tonight is going to make me better in the future. I'll have that knowledge and I'll just, this is really what I'm up to right now is just streamlining my process and learning how to work full time and stay as efficient as possible and maximize the ROI that I get out of this time that I'm spending. So um, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys are out there grinding towards your goals, enjoying the process. That's what I'm out here doing. And sometimes it's fun taking losses because I know it's going to make me better. So I'll see you guys tomorrow for more. Can't wait.